Hi guys, Paul here, and I have a new product to share with you today, and it is the new Volo Systems The Power PDB board. Let's get this guy out of the packaging and see exactly what comes with it. Now the first thing we have is some pin headers, and obviously they're going to be soldered onto the PDB board, depending on what sort of configuration you're going to be going with. And let's get this bad boy out of here, and this is the PDB, let's get him open. Now I really love these holes here, it's the same as what they did with their basic PDB, as in you can run uh, cable ties and that just ensures you don't rip your power cable off the PDB board. Now typically with any of the gear from Volo, the engineering is second to none. Uh, this PDB is really geared around four ESCs and obviously providing uh, regulated power, DC power back to either your servos, camera or video transmitter etc. Now, as far as power range, uh, you can run anything from 3S through to 6S LiPos on this PDB board. And you can obviously disable the 12 volts uh, if you so wish. So if you're running 3S, you could actually disable the 12 volts out. So as stated before, the build quality of the Volo products is superb. And being an Australian company, it was easy for us to actually uh, visit them and actually have a chat with one of the guys at Volo and have them actually run through... Uh, the specs and the design philosophy uh, and just run us through the board in terms of how you would set it up etc and some of the design features that this board actually has so what we'll do we'll cut to Scott from Volo Systems and uh, we are going to also have a giveaway of one of these boards and I will have the details for that in the description below. I thought we'd give you a bit of a look on um, what it's got in it and sort of how it works. Um, so to start with, what we've done is well, obviously it's just a power distribution board and we've got two voltage outputs. We've got here a, um, a 6 volt, which we'll be using for servos, flight controllers, receivers, all that kind of stuff. Um, the reason we've gone for 6 is with things like tricopters, there's a lot more torque on the servo at 6 rather than 5. Um, and all the flight controls are fine, the receivers are all fine at 6 volts, so we didn't think it would be a, an issue. Um, uh, like we know there's a few 5 volt cameras out there still floating around but most of the um, newer cameras now are sort of like 5 to 22 volts they've got that lot bigger voltage range so I didn't really think it mattered that much okay. um, then also here we've got a video in video, in, video out pin so this is a 12 volt output here um, and this one's also filtered and what it's got in it's a Pi filter which is kind of like a LC filter but with another C in the front of it Okay. So it's kind of like a CLC filter, so it's just a little bit more. Um, so camera in here, VTX in there, and then so just two servo cables, nice and easy. And then we've got another separate 12 volt output here for all your LEDs and stuff. Um, so it can take anything from 3S to 6S. And what we've set up is we've got a couple of jumpers here. So these are just little solder bridges, so you can pop on there just a drop of solder if you're going to use 3S okay. or another little drop of solder on this one instead if you're going to use 4 to 6S. So it's either one or the other, you can't put okay. it on both because that'll end bad. Okay. <laughs> um, the, we get, there's a couple of people that have said, oh, but you know, we'd like to be able to switch that because I swap packs all the time. So could you do it with a switch? Um, well, the reason we didn't make it a switch is because we think it's pretty easy for someone to forget what the switch is on and if they plug their 4S pack in and they've got a camera that can only take 12 volts or a VTX you know it's pretty easy to smoke some of your gear that in, that, in that case so we thought and at the same time too obviously with this being a new product a lot of the this will go on new quads and maybe with new cameras yep. so and with the you know the wider voltage range on them it's not going to matter as much as well so the thing is even on it if you if you're using it for 3S like that'll work fine but if you pop your solder bridge on this side, and even if you plug a 3S pack in and it's on that, the only thing that's going to happen is obviously these 12 volt outputs, they'll be about a volt less than what's coming in. So when your pack drops down to say 11 volts, yep. you'll get, be getting 10. But if you've got a camera that works from 5 to 22, that's not going to matter. Same with a lot of those newer VTXs, they're fine down to say 7 volts. So still, it's, we didn't think it was that big a drama. Okay. Um, we've got little LEDs on here that show you that the 6 volt and the 12 volt regulator are working, um, but not only working, but within specifications. So if it's within 10% of the six or the 12 volts, they'll be on. So if you plug it, if you start loading it up too much, like you put too much, too many things, like you put a thousand LEDs hanging off it or whatever, 
that 12 volt light might go out. The LEDs will still be on, but you'll know that it's not, okay. it's not at 12 volts. Um, other things that we've put in is we've got a conformal coating on the board. So this whole middle section's got a coating on it. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. Like even if you're soldering onto these tabs and you know, a few little specks of solder might flick onto here, it won't stick. You can just scratch it off. Because obviously if you get that on some of those pins on a, like if it wasn't coated, it's pretty hard to get rid of it. Um, so, and also too, moisture, dirt, chemicals, all that kind of yep. stuff. If you land in long grass and the props spit some water onto say this chip, that's not gonna end well, perhaps you know, normally, because obviously it could short some stuff out. So it just protects all that stuff and make sure that that whole circuit's fine. Um, there's no obviously no coating on the ends because that's where we need to solder our wires on. Um, we've got our battery terminals here and our cable for the cable tie as well, so you can I tie them down. I absolutely love that idea. That's such a, such a brilliant idea, especially with some quads where you can't tie the cable down to anything. Yeah, it's, it's, we sort of originally thought we'll do it for when, obviously, you're disconnecting and connecting your battery. Then obviously, it moves and there's a bit of stress there, but um, probably even more so when you have a crash. If you have yeah. a crash and your battery gets ejected, that's really going to help that from ripping the pads off there. And then the other thing we thought that makes it easier to set up is we've actually... You know, this isn't like a, because some of the boards have just got, you know, a strip down one side and a strip down the other side, and you've got to try and solder all your wires on next to each other. It's not really power distribution, it's kind of more just a strip that you can put stuff on. We've actually gone for separate tabs for each thing. So when it's in your frame, you can just bring your wires straight in. It's actually keeps it nice and clean, and it's easy. You've got one tab for each wire. You're not trying to put, you know, five wires on a tiny little space all on the same yeah. thing and you heat it up and then the other ones fall off and then, you know, it's just, yeah. you get a lot better connection on there. So another thing we've got here is we've got this, this is a little ideal diode and that's basically reverse polarity protection for this whole, the whole circuit here. So if you do wire it up wrong, you, you're safe, you're not going to blow it up. Mm -hmm. um, the other plus too is if you're using a, using it on 3S, we've got a fuse here. This is a self-resetting fuse. Um, so if you do have any shorts on anything, any of these terminals here, it'll actually blow that fuse, but then when it cools down, it just resets again, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can't actually, so it just saves your LiPo or, or wires and stuff if you get a short on this end. But if you're using it on the 4S side, there's actually two regulators built into this chip, and it's got its own um, protection built into it. So it'll actually support or you know handle the short circuit for a, a little while, like you wouldn't put it on all day. Yep but it'll, it'll take that for a while. So the good thing with that is obviously if you do have any little shorts on any of these, say like on your, if your LED wires, you did a dodgy job and they shorted out, well then your LEDs will go off, but your six volt will still be there. So yeah. they're sort of independent of each other like that. We've doubled the thickness on the copper on this board. It's actually got um, four layers on it. So you can see the back, but you, you can't really actually see it, but it's actually a four layer board. So what about so current draw on it and all that? We've sort of tested it. We think um, out of these outputs, 32 amps is pretty safe on each one, um, but like just constant, continuous, but it'll probably, we think it'll handle 50 amp spikes, no worries, but if you think 50 amps on each one, that's 200 amp. Yep. That's not going to really happen on a mini quad, even on a, even on a bigger quad, yep. that's pretty insane. So we're pretty confident it's never going to melt or, or yep. have any dramas. Um, Another thing too, actually, if, if you are running it on a 3S and you've got that, we've got a little tab over here on this side. Um, and that's just, can, you can disable the 12 watt regulator, obviously, because it's not being used because the power will pass straight through that. Um, another thing we've done as well is underneath this black masking here, these actual ESC tabs are a lot larger. They're actually quite big. Um, so they need a little bit of heat to get them get them going, but the plus with that is, is it makes them a lot stronger as well. So with the cables connected, the pads are actually massive underneath here, but obviously they look smaller because the black's covering them up on the front. Um, so the best way to solder these is obviously pop a bit of solder on and just sort of spread it around on the pad until it's got a nice coating of say one or two mil thick, and then obviously put some on your cable and then put the two together and fuse them and you'll get a really good join on that. And same thing under here when you're soldering your little pin headers on there. Um, everyone's given that a go, just give them a bit. But um, this last row of pins here, which is the ground, that's one big solid copper plate. So you'll need a little bit extra heat on there just to mount those last ones in. Um, anyone with a 
pretty good soldering iron, probably about 400 degrees for about five seconds and, and there will be no dramas at all. So just keep in mind, maybe a little bit more heat on that last pin and you'll need a little bit more heat just because all the pads are so big and they'll suck the heat out of the iron. Um, but other than that, yeah, once it's in, it's in. Sweet. Thanks very much for uh, taking the time to uh, give us a rundown on that. Much appreciated, buddy. No worries.